Okay, I guess we can move on. This one is also about detection. Not only you are detecting faces, you're also finding the alignment, which are uh, the key point detections. So in terms of methodology, we saw most of these ideas before. So this paper is gonna be a quick one. First of all, you're gonna use images at multiple scales, which is called image pyramid. So you're gonna use images at multiple scales. And each one of these neural networks are gonna look at a different scale. This one is gonna look at low resolution, higher resolution, and the highest resolution in your image pyramid. You have some bounding box proposal algorithm, which could be your edge boxes or selective search. It's gonna to propose to you a lot of bounding boxes. And then uh, given your neural network and the predictions of it, you can do non-maximum suppression and then bounding box regression. Now you have fewer boxes, so it has multiple stages. You go to the next stage, you have a higher resolution image, you have fewer boxes to work with, non-maximum separation, adjust the locations of those boxes. The last stage is gonna give you a few boxes that you're gonna keep only one of them. At the same time, you're doing key point detection. Let's go through the neural networks. Each one of these neural networks is gonna take as input a box. It's gonna resize it. The first one is gonna work with small resolution or low resolution images, which are 12 by 12. So each one of these inputs are one of your boxes. And then what do you want to know corresponding to that box? Is there a face in this box? Yes or no? So this is a much simpler problem compared to detecting objects in general, which you could have multiple classes of them. Here is just either a face or no face. So you have two classes, two outputs. Box regression is still adjusting the coordinates of the proposal. And then the landmark locations, you're going to have a 10 dimensional output, y10, because you're predicting the x and y coordinates of five landmarks the nose, left eye, right eye, uh, the left side of the mouth, the right side of the mouth, or the lips. This is this neural network. The next neural network has a very similar architecture. This one was fully convolutional. That's why you had one, one here, which you can remove, which you can just collapse it or flatten it. This one has a fully connected layer at the end. And then you are predicting two classes, four bounding box regression adjustments, and 10 landmark locations. The next neural network is also the same, but it's working at a higher resolution. And then it has the same structure, same output, two, four, 10. What is your face classification doing? You have a sample, so you have one of these box proposals, and then you want to increase the probability of whether there is a face here or there is no face. So PI is going to be the probability that this sample corresponds to a face. The, your ground truth, you know whether there is a face here or no. And I'm going to tell you how you're going to come up with positive and negative cases for classification. And then you train that part of your neural network. You know what loss to put here. For bounding box regression, you are adjusting the coordinates of your box or the predicted box compared to the ground truth. This is your ground truth, your box coming out of your neural network, which are about top left, uh, left, top, and the height and the width of your box, which are just adjustments to the nearest ground truth, or actually adjustments of the candidate towards the nearest ground truth. For your landmark locations, we could work with heat maps but this paper is working with uh, actual coordinates. 10 values for your coordinates are gonna come out of your neural network. You know the corresponding ground truth. And these landmarks, as I said, correspond to noise, left eye, right eye, and the mouth corners. And then you're gonna write down your regression loss on top of that. You have a multi-objective optimization problem here. You have different heads. How do you balance them? You're gonna balance them using coefficients. So how many losses do you have? you have three losses corresponding to the detection, bounding box regression, and the landmarks. I is gonna count your data. J, the superscript, is about detection, uh, box regression, and landmark regression. And then these are coefficients to balance the trade-off between the two. So alpha I, or these alpha Js, are the target importance. And why do you need these target importances? Because your data could be imbalanced. 
there could be a lot of box proposals that are going to correspond to the background class or no face class. So you're going to balance your data using these coefficients. And then uh, you're going to have your different weights for different losses. Are you doing detection? You're going to have a different beta compared to doing bounding box or landmark regressions. That's your loss. Perfect. What is your data? Ground truth. First of all, you're going to do some hard example mining here, which you're going to write down your loss function on your batch and then choose the top 70% of it. So maybe the easy cases are really big boxes that you can easily locate. What else? What is your data? What is the negative case? Any region, so any of these regions that you have here, that you're going to look at your intersection over union. Any region that has an intersection over union that is less than 0.3, that's a negative case. It doesn't correspond to any ground truth faces. So it's just a background. What are your positive cases if the intersection over union is bigger than 0.65? What are the five part faces? If you have any box or any candidate that is between these two numbers, its intersection over union is between these two numbers. And anything else you are just discarding. These are part faces. And your landmark faces is where you actually have data. So these are your ground truths. So it has to be perfect. For your phase classification, you need to know the negative and positive cases to train. It's either a zero or a one. You need, uh, for bounding box regression, you can look at positive and part faces. You don't need to take into account the negative cases when you're doing your regression. For your landmark, you're going to look at your landmark faces portion of your training data. And then the detection is going to help you later on. You first detect a face, and then you're going to recognize it. But before you're able to recognize it, you first need to align your images. Some of them are looking, they have different poses. So you want them to have a front facing pose. And that one, you can use some correspondence between 3D geometries and do some meshing using these key points. And we saw that when we were doing deep face. Any questions about this one? Okay, perfect.